A Rod. I just jumped out the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Hotter than devils cooking up season like I'm top with sage. This sudden hospitality smoking like we box the. All right, so we got A Rod jumping off the porch with us today. What's good? You know what I'm saying? A mob here, uh, Austin, Texas. First time out here with my people ready to jump off the porch with Dirty Glove. Yes, sir, man. So, this is your first time in the A? Yes, sir. Okay. So have you been out here for a while? Or what you think so far? Hey, gratitude is lovely. The people is lovely. I like it out here. I can't lie. So far, it's been great yeah. everywhere we've been. And now we're going to see what this like. Okay, for sure, man. Now, I appreciate you coming by today too, man. And go ahead and introduce who you got sitting behind you today. It's awesome, man. Got another mob member, my boy Gifted J, J2 Gifted, however you want to call it. And his lovely wife with him, you know, Deja Unique. Part of the group too, you know what I'm saying? Been supporting music for a long time. So I would have brought everybody, but we ain't need that right now. It's more about me today. Okay, <laughs> that's what's good, man. All right, so talk to us about life in Austin, man. What, what really goes on out there? All I know about Austin is when I went out there for South By. So I'm sure, you know, it's completely different when there's not a music festival going on, man. Well, me personally, how I live out there, I'm a I'm a hustler, I'm a gambler. So everywhere I go in there, I'm gambling with me and my people. That's what life is, like if you really in a mix with us. So every day we just, we got a little place called a Sugar Shack. I got a couple homeboys. We just set up dice games, you know, get our money on. Besides that, the living is pretty cool. Nothing too bad, nothing too major. It goes on, whatever, or otherwise, you know what I'm saying? But besides that, it's like a love-hate city. You know what I'm saying? You might get more love if you're not from there because people don't really know you. You might get love because you're from there. You know what I'm saying? You've been popular since you've been coming out or you might get hated just because you're doing good. That's just how it is everywhere, though. Ain't nothing spectacular differently. I got you, man. Uh, going back to the gambling, man. So what's like the most you ever won or the most you ever lost in a day then, man? <laughs> Ooh, I didn't won about tens of thousands. Uh, I didn't lost about tens of thousands too, so shit. I can't. <laughs> however, I'll be shooting two and two, and it's going on all night. You're going to lose a grip, or you're well, you going to win a bank. I'm going to tell you now, they, them boys know that I pump up a bank on them every day I'm out there. So that's how I got out here. They ain't, ain't going to tell y'all that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, I flew out here on their money. <laughs> All right, so going back to like your childhood, uh, you know, how would you describe that? What were you into as a kid growing up in Austin? Then? I mean, um, I started out straight sports a little bit. Never, I stayed with my grandma. My, I ain't have, I ain't really mess with my parents like that. Um, I took a turn for the worse. I had an accident when I was eight. I got shot in the face. Oh shit! Um, survived that basically, and next thing you know, I started living with my cousin. And after I started living with my cousin, basically my grandma ended up going to prison because of bunch because of that and some other stuff. So I ended up just like basically really jumping off the porch. Like I started getting into stuff, just you know what I'm saying, figuring myself out at the time because no parents and then my actual guardian was gone. So I ended up meeting a bunch of members from New Orleans, basically because Hurricane Katrina, and then that's when I met who he is today, the mob, basically. Mm. We, done, we got, got clicked tight after that, and I found like a different family. So I ended up growing up with them, and that's what all transpired to this. Yeah, I got you. Um, going back to that incident, though, how does an eight-year-old get shot in the face? Was it like a stray bullet? Or? Nah, kids playing with guns type of thing. Sisters in the, in the house just one night. We was just all messing around, and then it got out of hand. I was just standing. I really was just standing there at this point. You know what I'm saying? And my sister was like, my other, was standing right there, my other sister was standing right there. I couldn't tell she had a gun. And like, she just was like right here in my face and it just shot me like right in the face. Or so like right here, it came out right here. God, and then I just like stood still for a little bit and it was just like everything just hit me after a while. I was like bleeding, no tongue basically. It my, knocked my tongue off sure. and all that. And then, but the good thing my grandma was going out bowling that night because we stayed with my granny. So she usually just lock us up and go bowling. Nothing bad happened ever until that night. Then her sister stayed next door. So my older sister, she actually just carried me to over there. She was only a year older than me, nine year old, carrying a big eight year old in her hand next True. door. Ambulance came a couple of weeks later out the hospital. I was good, back to normal. True. That's wild, though. You blessed, man. That, that was all that happened, yeah, man. I'm, I'm knowing. I, got, I had a couple of interviews with some. So people, a Russian dude came down here, matter of fact, 
2017, and he interviewed me for kids with tragic stories and all mm -hmm. kind of stuff that's happened to you. So he was, we talked about it then. It was very normal to me. Yeah. Do you have any PTSD from that incident, though? I mean, I don't like loud noises and stuff like that ever since. You know, I don't like people pointing no guns at me at this case. Nah, but for real. Besides that, nah, I'm good. Okay. So what's been like one of the biggest life lessons you had to learn in your life up until today, man? Life lessons? Hmm. Uh, from listen, listening to so much Nipsey Hussle now, it's like give it all you got, basically. When I leave here, I want to. I don't care what happens to me, as long as I figured that I really gave it up my all here the whole time. You know, I never slacked a little bit. No more. I really took life serious. You know what I'm saying? Whether I won or lost, I made sure I did it all to the highest level. You know what I'm saying? They all coaches always told us give 100 percent, and then they always told us give 120 percent. I know after a while in life, I just started giving this whole thing 120 percent. That's why I'm here today. Yeah, not for real. So did you go to college after school? Or? Yeah, I tried that. Tried three different guys, tried to go hoop, you know, try to, I, I really mostly tried it for my grandma, I ain't gonna lie. I didn't really care to go to school no more like that. I wanted to hoop though and play sports, of course, because I thought mm -hmm. I had, you know, the talent to make it to the next level after that. Got on to a couple of schools, but I couldn't never stay focused. You know what I'm saying? I already had a kid and everything down there in high school, so I, I was like scrambling to live in life here and there. And then, I ain't gonna lie, college, my first year was a jungle. <laughs> I ain't go to no B. I was in, in Little Rock. Oh, really? Little Rock, oh, it was going shit. down every day. So That's I was a just big like, difference in Austin, man. What? It was going down in Little Rock. And ever since then, I just like, man, I wasn't really with school no more. But I still tried, though. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I, that's all I can say. I'm going to go back, I said, finish by the time I'm 35 or something. But okay. For, what, what, would, what were you studying, or what do you want to study? If I you was studying back? math. Okay. I was going to be a math major. Just, I didn't want to, they always ask me if I want to be a teacher. I'm like, no. Shit, I just wanted I just wanted to have me a math major. I want to be that intelligent with numbers. Yeah. So I could talk numbers with people. Definitely help you with the gambling too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know the probabilities and all that and shit. I, you know, I study all that. People think this shit luck. I don't believe in luck. Mm. Shit, I believe in probabilities and things you can prove and God himself. Yeah. No, I dig that. So what has being a father taught you about life over the years? <sighs> You being a father, it just, it just tells you. At first, we was I was I, I was out here running wild, just doing whatever. And being a father just gave me basically just something to live for. It just teaches you it's more to life, you know what I'm saying, than yourself. That's it. Because of course, I once upon a time as a youngster, I was just only thinking about me. I didn't have no kids, and nothing like that. I was out gambling, hustling, just you know what I'm saying, making moves for myself. But now with kids, it taught me how to reach out a little bit more, reach out. So now I don't just do for me. I do for everybody around me. You know what I'm saying? And that was a product of my kids because just imagine if I didn't have no kids, I wouldn't even have probably, you know what I'm saying, gave it out like that. And these days I'm just giving away. You know what I'm saying? Don't make me no difference. I love it. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm here for. I figure like, you know what I'm saying? Because once I leave, no matter how, how rich I can be or how rich I get, once I leave, that's all gone. I'm, I'm giving it all away no matter what. Yeah, I feel that. So how'd you get into making music and how old were you at first? <sighs> first time was... My dad came home, uh, I was like nine years old, or nine or eight years old, this right, maybe right before or after the incident. My dad came home, but he came home a couple times, and he used to rap to uh, me and my sister. And, my, and we, you know, we was just kids. We ain't never just, like, take it serious, but he used to go crazy. Like, I used to be, now that I realize it, and he keep rapping it, I was like, this dude's actually pretty, like, real good. You know what I'm saying? Coming from Texas and know how he actually rap, you know what I'm saying? With the screw style and all that, but he wasn't rapping like that. He was rapping more like of a Scarface okay. type of guy, DMX type of guy. So I ended up just like inheriting in that. And then my, really what pushed me to go, my friend from New Orleans, his name J3, one of the reasons why I'm rapping, I said he was like a 10-year-old kid coming down here from Hurricane Katrina. And we used to have a little tape recorder and stuff. He used to rap on it come in there rapping every day, but I've never seen a 10-year-old kid rap this good. They talk about the Lil Wayne's and all that stuff, used to rap at that age. I watched a 10-year-old kid really rap, like real rap, and you would be in there confused, like, man, how does he know how to say this like this already? It don't sound like no little kid jibber-jabber. It's like a grown man spitting, and he telling a, a pain story about Katrina and that stuff, and he just kept pushing me, why you don't rap, why you don't rap? It's like, man, everybody was around me was rapping. At the time, I'm like 12. I'm like, man, I'm gonna give it a try. 
So I just kept trying. I kept trying. I was trying to find my style, really. Yeah. So I got to listen to different people. You know, I came up listening to Texas music. So, of course, I came up with, you know what I'm saying, the Texas flow and all that. But I always, I got into all the New York rappers and everything else. It was mm. history after that. <laughs> it was history. I couldn't wait to spit nothing but bars on top of bars instead of just, you know, the mainstream flow. And then basically what happened was I, I already knew the ins and outs of the game. I used to study rap. You know, instead before I really just wanted to actually put a song out, I used to study rap all day, seeing people's backstories, how they made it, you know what I'm saying, how much it costs to get in the game or whatever. So I, for years, from about, I would say, 2008 until 2019, I studied the game. And then I saved up enough money to put into the game. So after I saved over $100,000, I was like, I'm gonna invest this all into my, all into music because I, I figured I think I know the way now, I think I know what you gotta do. So that's exactly what I did, and I dropped a, a song before prior just to see like just to get some reviews from friends and stuff. But I deleted it; it wasn't nothing serious. Until actually 2020, I was like, you know what? I'm, a, I'm gonna really show them like you know what I'm saying I, I really got the real deal rap. Like I can make a song and I can just straight rap your head off and. Boom, that's what I did now. Yeah. So what's your creative process? Do you write or you just freestyle punch both. in or you do both? But if I'm, when I write my albums, <clears throat> I do a lot, of, a lot of writing. Like I write, I wrote albums probably, my first one I wrote in like three months. Hmm. Second one, five months. This one, I just dropped the, the 15th of February. Took me a little, took me longer than usual because at first I was, I was doing too much other stuff. I had a lot of process to write this album. I don't know why, but I write very quick though. Like I write a song in like 30 minutes. Hmm. All I need is a, if I, I can't sing all, so should I go get somebody to sing the chorus or whatever I'm thinking, what am I envisioning? But freestyle, I freestyle some songs too. And it's like, you not gonna tell, it sounds like I written, you know what I'm saying? But that's just a lot of practice it took me, you know? But I don't like, I think if, I can't just sit there and freestyle in front of your face on an actual record and then think for you to take me serious. You know what I'm saying? You know, really pro thought process in that. That's just right off the head. So, yeah, I prefer, to, I prefer to write, but I'm from Texas, so you know, I freestyle all day, <laughs> nah, day. Like, That's just a thing. So what's the music scene like in Austin right now? There's a lot of talent coming out the city? Yeah, super a lot of talent. A lot of people, good people. You know what I'm saying? A lot of hardworking artists right now. Um, some bitch ass niggas too. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna take that out of there. Some bitch ass niggas too. But I don't care about that that much. I just think everybody, you know what I'm saying, get an equal chance to make it, then that's that's good enough. I don't like I love my city to death, but I don't really, you know, I don't care what we do with the city like that. You know what I'm saying? Individually is what it's all about, you know what I'm saying? What you do for you and your people, the city can stay how it is. But I think the talent right now is is just as good as it's ever been. You know what I'm saying? But it's been talented like this. It's just nobody was really rapping and taking it that serious. And mind you, everybody was swag rapping just a little bit ago. Yeah. Everybody was uh, saucerholics and all that. I'm going to say like that. It was drip guys and shit. And then, you know, niggas like me, the mob and us, I come out with straight music from the heart. The shit, you know what I'm saying? Shit that really happened. You know, straight life stories. And now, you know what I'm saying? That just endured everybody. I can tell you now, it endured everybody to, just, to rap their life stories. Because if you go look at music, Right now in Austin, Texas, before I dropped that project, you ain't gonna hear one song like that at all. You're not gonna hear that. You're gonna hear everybody swag rapping and doing all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Some probably dip and dip out, but now I got a whole project full of soulful samples. You know what I'm saying? So people just like, you really like, I've never heard nothing like this. You really taking a new school rap style, you know what I'm saying, with your own creative bars and putting it on old school soulful beats. And it just sounds like, it just sounds crazy to yeah. them. When it comes to those samples, are you like pitching those to the producers? Like, hey, go ahead and sample no, no. this. No, no, I really be, people ask me that all the time. If I had a, a producer like that, I'd probably be crazier. Really? I'd probably be crazier because they can just, I could give them what I want. Mm -hmm. I actually go on YouTube and just find these beats really? and pay for them. And, okay. You know, so I actually have to go scro scrolling through thousands of trash beats. You know what I'm saying? So I find <laughs> this good beat and write to it. Thousand more trash beats, this good beat and write to it. You know what I'm saying? And it's a long process. That's why that's an even long process when you're trying to come up with an album and you're doing that. So after that, man, I hope now I can find a damn producer at this point because, it, but that's, that's my favorite kind of beats though. Them samples, they just like, they talk to me. Yeah. I can hear it on, I can hear myself on there all times. 
Yeah, that product of 1992, man. That it was like that whole project was like that. Yeah, people been giving that. I ain't gonna lie, that was a great. That was crazy how I came up with that project so fast. It was so fast that I came up with that project, but I actually found the beats like right in time. That's why I was searching every day. I was telling, I was telling my home. A lot of songs, three songs I came with two days before I even released the album. Really? I just wrote some songs I like I needed right too. That would be Love Been Missing. Um, Love been missing. I think. What did I say? Uh, championship interlude, and I think it was another one. I just like. I just came up with. I just was like, man, I need an extra three songs. I was trying to make a project that was a little lengthy. I don't like. See, that's another thing. I don't like long projects. You know what I'm saying? I can, I'm trying to get my point across within really like 13 songs. Yeah. So that was that. Actually, was the perfect for me. I don't know. They, they, I don't think. I think they really would sleep on that album. I don't think too many people. A lot of people heard it. Good, good enough streams and stuff, but not like real people that really need to hear, especially an uh, album like that coming out of where I come from. Yeah. So yeah, my boy Don Trip on there too, man. Yeah. I love, I love some Don Trip. I grew up on that. I went, like I said, I went to Little Rock, Arkansas. And I ended up being going to Memphis a couple times. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And passing through my homeboy from Little Rock, so he used to always just talk about him. And then I kept hearing songs about him, kept hearing songs and songs. I listened to songs. I'm like, man, this dude sound good. Like his, his storytelling and his unique, his voice is unique. And when I just came up with that song, now that song, that, that was a, that producer is actually from Memphis. Hmm. That's what's crazy about it. And I was on YouTube and it was like free for profit. I'm like, why would this be free? So I listened to it. I'm just, I'm, well, I was looking up. You know what I was crazy? I was looking up Starlito type beats. Really? <laughs> I was looking up Starlito type because I like Starlito too. You know what I'm saying? Then I came across it and I'm just listening to it. I really listened to it like 30 times before I even rapped on it. Hmm. I was like, this beat really just that good. So got to listen to it. I already had it. I wrote my verse in like five, 10 minutes. It was like, it was just, I already knew what I wanted to talk about. Called my, uh, my homeboy Pete and contacted his big brother. And I'm like, hey, I need you to get on this right now because this is sound crazy. Like this beat, like we can talk. He was like, send me your verse. I sent him my verse in the song already. And then I got my homeboy from New York. He sing and rap with me. So I bring him, I'm in, the, I'm in the car and we on the way to the studio and I'm showing him the beat in the car. I'm like, hey bro, I need a chorus. Like this beat, we was like, man, this whole go crazy. So he's like humming stuff. Like, uh, I'm like, then he was like, I'm so get money with my shooters. I'm like, hey, hey, say that again. I'm like, all right, repeat it. That's right there. Boom, it was crazy. And then called Don Trip up, quick process, easy. Oh, yeah. He, he kills Come all the classics. features. Yeah, too, he, yeah he, that's, I looked at his page and all his features, and that's what made me jump on it anyway. No, nah, for real. Now you got the new project, Grandson. Man. <laughs> so what was your inspiration going into this one? This one was just like my third and final, like, I always say the third time of charm. So I'm like, I gotta, I always say with time, they'll find you, you know? And I'm like, if I drop something that sounds much different from everybody, but the rapping and everything is great, and I, I'm staying in, with it this consistently, they will get, they'll come find me. So in the first song, before I started rapping, it was like, it's a whole bunch of like lists and something of who just the better rapper in Austin and this, this, that, and that, and that. And I don't never get put on lists, but the newspaper put me on there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, if our front newspaper can put me on a list, how a social media camp or campaign don't put me on here like I'm just not the one shaking up the town. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not getting all these famous features, bringing people to our city, trying to turn our city up, doing all these videos in our neighborhood and our state parks and all that shit. So I was like, I'm gonna get them something to show like who really like cold at rapping. Fuck all the who think they cold at rapping, who really cold at rapping. So I told myself in the first rapping, and it's called Southern Poetry, it sound like a it sound like it's an old school, a old school, it sound like a Lil Wayne type of beat, like something he'll play with right quick. And I'm like, can't lose, you gotta fight back, you know what I'm saying? You gotta catch up. So people came they, like saying they was better than me, they can rap better than me. So I'm like, I'm gonna show them in the first flow and I just start ripping it. Second song, they, the next two songs was basically like Product of 92. It's going back to the straight soul, straight mm -hmm. old, the me that I know. That, you know what I'm saying? I think I mastered that part. So I released it. The first, actually the second song has my dad on it. Oh really? Yeah, so my That's dad hard right there. I actually got him out. After he left out of prison, <clears throat> I got him to do come to the studio with me, you know what I'm saying, and did the song with me. 
third song got my homeboy from New York. The fourth song and the fifth song, this was just like straight Lil Wayne flow. Like, let me just show y'all because, you know what I'm saying, I'm just trying to be that cold with it. And I put, a, I've been listening to a lot of Detroit music. I was listening to Babyface Ray and them, and I, I heard it on the song, and I heard the beat. I'm like, let me show these Detroit, like, how to rap. Like, y'all be rapping, but let me show y'all how to, like, put bars on one of these Detroit-type beats. So I put it on, just did what I normally do. And then this album, I was just, I was I'm finally starting to get, like, label offers and stuff. So I was like, if I can drop this album and they, people get hip to it like this, this will really get me on, you know. I think the other two was good. The first one was like just showing people me, like this is my backstory, you know what I'm saying? This is where I come from. The second one is the second half of my life, you know what I'm saying, after I started making a change. And this one is just showing straight elegancy, like me just elevating at all times, me just showing my personal aroma to people, like this is how I feel every day, this is what I do every day. And all this, all this transpired from listening to Nipsey Hussle, you know what I'm saying? Because I would have never really just dropped any more music because I was just hustling. I was making enough money to just chill, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I'm going to just do what I want to do. But after I listened to Victory Lap, I just couldn't. I, just, I was like, man, it's like I do that. Like, well, he rapping, that's how I rap, but I just never dropped nothing. I'm like, man, I got to try that, you know what I'm saying? And he, I listened to his interviews, and he's like, man, just tell your story and this, this, that, and that. And then I'm like, man, I got to do it. So I just, boom. I'm a musician now. Now that's hard right there. What videos do you plan to drop off grandson? <sighs> All right. The first one, I dropped Wage War. That's with Neek Bucks. Mm -hmm. That was my uh, dude from New York, from Harlem. Pretty cool dude. Went out there, shot a video. Was loving it. You know what I'm saying? His, his style, gritty and hard, just like mine. Then the, the, really the intro I'm finna drop was really supposed to be been Southern Poetry. was supposed to be the first video. It was actually going to feature me like doing multiple things. First is gonna be me in a boxing ring, like because I'm telling people to fight back. So I gotta like, I'm letting myself get whooped in the beginning, like as if they was rapping better than me. Then I come out of nowhere and I showcase my skills. And then I say, um, I said, the past is the past, the present a gift, and I adore that present, for sure been special. That's why I'm out here dapping the devil and take that same hand and write something that's hot as a kettle, cause I don't rap, I take quill pens, describe life in a letter. So basically on that part right there, I was having a room, me and my homeboys in suits. And then when I say dapping the devil, it's like one, one black suit with a red tie. So I'm gonna be in like a room and it's just like uh, Kid Cudi, that Pursuit of Happiness video. So that part would be like that. So in the, 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 how the beat rides, it sounds like that type of vibe. Like, you know what I'm saying? Nice champagne and all this going around. That would be to that video. Of course, Problem Child 2 has to have a video to it. It's just the way we talked, the way we was rapping on there and it was just so heartfelt to me. All my songs like that, I'd be like, man, I, was, I would drop a video to every song if I could, <laughs> shit, but I already know I'd be having to pick. The Choice Soul, that's more of when I uh, go back to, I'm going to go back to Johnny Dang and all that, you know what I'm okay. saying, give me some more ice and shit. And we going to like show the party side of us, like what we do, like as a group, as like, you know what I'm saying? So you know how, and they type of videos, it's a lot of, a lot of scenes, a lot of, a lot of flashes go through. So I'm a flashback, both diamonds everywhere with me and my people, you know what I'm saying? And then the next video, before I just stop and just, you know, focus more on life again, and ride this album out, I think I would probably do, I think I would do Heart of a Lion like that, because that's like me like really rapping. And I kind of want to do it in like a dark setting, kind of by myself, you know, and it's just like flashbacks of my life. But I'm just giving, I'm rapping it to you, but I'm giving it to you too. And then after that, I, I, I'm just going to ride this album out. That's what I thought to do. I said, this one probably going to take me far, you know what I'm saying? So third time the charm, the grandson is it. I feel that, man. So looking forward to the rest of 2022, what's some plans, what's some goals you set for yourself? True. <clears throat> I said if I get two more label offers this year, I'd sign. If not, I'd remain independent because I feel like if, if, they, if they write me at all, I can carry myself. That means they somebody of importance is seeing me. You know what I'm saying? So then I got South by Southwest coming up. You know, that's normal for Austin. I'm actually, it's my first time being an artist. It's my first time really rapping. Yeah. I would have been an artist, official artist 2020, but they shut everything mm -hmm. down for the past two years. So got some shows over there. 
link in with some Houston, some of my Houston people. One of my homeboys I went to college with, he real good with rap a lot of people. So I'm gonna do a showcase with them and do a showcase with a couple other things that I had set up out there. After that, that after March is over, I'm gonna just venture out. I think, I think through the next two months, I'll probably drop just a single or two, maybe one if I'm gonna get somebody like nice on there, like Mozzie or something, you know, mm. probably get that and just ride that little wave out, push the music as much as I can, you know what I'm saying, these albums, and just like advance, just advance in the game somehow, some way. I've been working with plenty of marketers, you know what I'm saying, one that stay out here, Mike Check Global, and a couple of other people that's been helping me like push my music. So once I get to, you know what I'm saying, videos with like million views or so on it, you know what I'm saying, or my streams, they already in the hundreds of thousands. Once those, my, each album gets to like a million streams or something, that's my accomplishment for the year. So that's something I ain't never had before, you know. So that would make, that would just end my year off greatly, basically. Yeah, all about that elevation, yeah, man, for elevation, sure. Yeah. All right, hey, Rod, you got any shout outs you'd like to give before we wrap it up here, man? Oh, uh, yeah, everybody. I might as well, since I'm here, <laughs> and shout out the whole group, you know what I'm saying? That's J3, Els, Ash, Peter. Mip, Black, Bo, shit. Yeah, Deion, my cousins, DeAndre, Lil' Ken, you know what I'm saying? My dudes, Terrell, Rob, you know what I'm saying? Just all the love that I get from all them dudes. Them dudes just, them dudes got me to where I'm here to this day, and I, to this day, I'm appreciated all of them. Appreciate all my city, you know what I'm saying? All my supporters, everybody. People really that listen to your music and really, really buy your music. People that really want to see you win, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to all of them. Shout out to Dirty Glove, for, you know letting us jump off the porch, you know what I'm saying? And then boom, that's good. Hotter than devils cooking them season like I'm top of sage. This southern hospitality smoking like we box the place. King like the son of Korea.